Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marion. In today's video, this is going to be the mammography review questions video. This is for physics part one. If you want me to do part two, can you put it in the comment box or give the video a thumbs up? If this is your first time watching my videos, I do registry review videos. If you click on playlist, you can scroll down and get to the mammography registry review. I also throw in lifestyle videos, other review videos for um, CT, work related videos. So that's why I say you just have to scroll down on my playlist to get to the mammography review videos if you want me to do part two just put it in the comment box or give the video a thumbs up i have patient i have a video about patient care where i have questions i also have like a full lesson regarding patient care physics and anatomy those videos are an hour long it's going to help you prepare for your test so we'll get started so this is on the ART website because my license and certification is through ART, but you can use my review for any national board exam. I'm sure it's all going to be the same or similar information. So this is just like a handout for you to know what's going to be on the test, um, how many questions are going to be in each section. So since I'm doing the physics, under image production which is physics there there will be about 30 questions so um, just let me know if you want more practice questions you can also check out my physics video that's going to go into more detail as well so what i like to do is i like to read the question i like to read the answers and then i like to give you the explanation and that's because a lot of people who are watching my videos they aren't sitting at the computer. A lot of people are, you know, they're in their car, they're cleaning up, they're washing dishes, they're, you know, sometimes people have their phone down. So I like to read the question and answers. And um, so we'll start with question one. The negative side of the X-ray tube is called the anode, the cathode, thermionic emission, or the circuit. I'll give you a few minutes to decide and then I'll tell you the answer. And you can pause the video and, um, you know, study the answers or, you know, try to find the answer if I haven't told you the answer. It's called the cathode. The cathode is considered the negative side of the x-ray tube. It has two parts. These two parts are called the filament and the focusing cup. So I always say pay attention to the question, the answer, and the explanation because the explanation goes into further detail. And then also you can always go back to those videos I told you about where I have like a four study guide review of important things you should know because that also goes into further detail question two the boiling off of outer shell electrons of the filament atoms are called the anode the cathode the circuit or thermionic emission Thermionic emission. Thermionic emission is when electrons are released from a heated metal, which is typically a cathode filament when it reaches a high temperature. Question three, the positive side of the X-ray tube is called the anode, the cathode, the circuit, or the focal spot size. the anode so the anode is the positive electrode within the x-ray tube that converts electrical energy into x-rays question four which of the following is not considered a target material that is used in mammography you have your kvp your molybdenum 
rhodium, or tungsten. KVP, the target material that is used in mammography can be tungsten, rhodium, or molybdenum. And also, whenever you are in your clinical setting or working as a tech in MAMO, pay attention to whenever you are taking the pictures. It has all of this information. It has your KVP range, your mass range. It has what target or what filter you're using whenever you are um, taking those x-rays. Question five. A small, thin area of the tube envelope that allows x-rays to exit the tube is called the x-ray tube window, filament, your mask, or protective housing. X-ray tube window is the answer. The X-ray tube window is a small part of the tube envelope that is made of low attenuation material, usually beryllium, which lets the desired imaging X-ray beam out of the tube. The following controls the wavelength or penetrating power of the beam in mammography. Focal spot size, kilovoltage, KV your mass or your pixel. KV. Kilovoltage or KV controls the wavelength or the ability to penetrate the power of the beam. It determines the energy of the x-rays that is used to create the image. Question eight. What is the KVP range in mammography? 10 to 20 KVP, 20 to 40 KVP, 30 to 60 KVP, or 100 to 120 KVP? Twenty to 40 KVP. KVP is the maximum voltage applied to the X-ray tube during an exposure. It influences the energy of the X-rays that are produced. Therefore, the KVP range is 20 to 40 whenever you are taking those images because it's going to be different for each patient, you know, because of the breast size, especially if you have AEC, then you're not really changing you know, your KVP range. I have seen techs go up or down on the KVP range if they are taking pictures of someone with breast implants. But uh, for the most part, just pay attention to the KVP range whenever you have different patients, you know, different breast thickness. Question nine, what should happen to the KV in mammography in order to penetrate dense breast tissue? Do you decrease the KV, increase the KV, no change, turn off the KV completely? Increase the KV. When kilovoltage or KV is increased, the penetrating power is increased. Increasing the KV is important to penetrate dense breast tissue. This will result in more scatter radiation. So keep that in mind. Increasing the KV will result in more scatter radiation. Question 10. The milliampere or MA determines what? Does it determine the wavelength or the ability to penetrate the beam? The focal spot size? the number of x-rays produced and the radiation quantity or the amount of breast density that a patient has. It determines the number of x-rays produced and the radiation quantity. So you have your mass, 
This is the total amount of radiation produced during an exposure. It impacts the number of x-rays that are produced and determines radiographic density or the darkness on the final mammogram image. Question 11, why should the mass be kept low in mammography? Is it to penetrate the breast tissue, to increase radiation dose to the patient, to reduce radiation dose to the patient, or to reduce breast thickness uniformly to the patient? To reduce radiation dose to the patient. Your mask should be kept low to help reduce the radiation dose to the patient. This will also help to reduce repeated exposures and allow for shorter exposure times to help minimize patient motion and blurriness on the final image. Question 12, what is the primary goal of compression in mammography? To have a better KVP selection, to have a better mass selection, to increase breast thickness uniformly, or to reduce breast thickness uniformly? I'll give you a couple of seconds to um, answer this question. To reduce breast thickness uniformly. So the primary goal of compression in mammography is to reduce the breast thickness. This is going to make it more uniform. This will also help the patient radiation dose to decrease because it is decreasing the scatter radiation. Therefore, it will provide an image with greater contrast. Question 13, the maximum force of compression under automatic compression should not exceed how many pounds? 25 pounds, 30 pounds, 45 pounds, or 50 pounds. Forty five pounds. Question 14. The minimum force of compression under automatic compression should be at least how many pounds? Five pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds, or 25 pounds? Twenty five pounds. Okay, we're almost done. This is the last question. Question 15, which of the following features on a mammography machine unit helps to ensure consistent image quality and appropriate radiation exposure by adjusting the exposure factors? We have our anode, automatic exposure control or AEC, your KVP or your SNR, which is your signal to noise ratio. your AEC. So pay attention um, to your, you know, your parameters whenever you're going and you're selecting your patient and you see, you know, your different settings. Pay attention to the mammography computer screen because you're going to have your KVP, your mass is going to say AEC. It's going to have, if you want AEC turn off for whatever reason, but most facilities have AEC on. So pay attention to the final exposure number, like how much KVP really was exposed or how much mass really was exposed because you see what number is selected, but once you start compressing, then it gives you a different KVP, a different mass number, you know, for the final image. So this will help to adjust automatically for your exposure factors based on the density and thickness of a patient breast, because we all know different breasts, you know, we have different breast size, different breast thickness. We have the breast implants. We have patients coming in without breast implants. So it just depends on the actual patient. All right, so we're done with this video. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you found it to be helpful. Um, it is, um, 
it does take me a little bit to make these videos because I'm also doing other things. You know, I'm working. I have personal life as well. So giving a video a thumbs up or even just comment and telling me it helped you, you appreciate it, uh, make more, things like that. It does motivate me to um, keep making these videos because I'm also, you know, pursuing another degree as well. So um, it can be kind of time consuming, you know, trying to do everything. So if you don't mind, just um, you can, you know, support the video, support the channel by just giving it a thumbs up, saying how much you appreciate it. I will greatly appreciate it um, because it will, like I said, you know, motivate me to keep making these type of videos to help students. That's that's my primary goal to just help someone pass their registry. So um, just pay attention to the description box. Sometimes I ask if I forget to ask you questions in this video. Sometimes I ask questions in the description box um, just to have, you know, to have everyone interacting, sharing their ideas, sharing their thoughts, sharing their experiences. We're all going to have different experiences. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you found it to be helpful. You can also hit the subscribe button if you would like more videos. But other than that, that's it. Let me know if you want more review questions. All right. Bye.